Hi, welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. Today we're going to look at knitting for profit and the main question is should I knit my stock before I start selling or should I wait for orders and then only knit up the items once I've been paid? Hi, welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. I'm here with Knitting Natter to help you learn to knit the easy way. And we're talking about knitting for profit today. And yes, that is a big question. Should you knit your stock up before you start selling? Or should you wait for the orders to come in and only then start knitting the items once you've been paid? So that is a big question. I'm going to take two weeks to answer this. So I will look at both options, the pros and cons, the benefits of each one. And then you can choose which one will fit your um, knitting life perfectly. Right. So we will dive into that, but first of all, if you'd like to know more about Knitting for Profit, then there is a whole playlist here on the Knit with Hannah channel all about Knitting for Profit. And of course, I do have a Knitting for Profit course, and that is Profitable Knitting Secrets. There's a, it's quite a big course. There are five modules with some bonus workshops as well. You can go and have a look on about that on my website. Now, Let's talk about should you knit your stock or should you knit only when you get the orders? The main thing you have to realize is that either one of these options is open to you no matter where you intend to sell what you knit. And at the end of the day, uh, there are a few things that you can weigh up and think about which one would suit you. And for both options, you really will have to knit up the samples, whether you are knitting up the stock first or whether you're taking orders. The people who are buying from you need to see a finished item if you're going to only knit when you get an order. So you'll have to go to the craft fair or put these items, the photographs of these finished items on an online store. Um, and then they will see the samples and be able to purchase from you. Let's look today at why it's beneficial to you to knit your stock up first. You may be a knitter who likes variety. You may be really happy to knit a few items up month after month and then three months later you think, oh, I've had enough of this and then you can focus on selling. That's a real bonus on knitting your stock up before you start to sell. Um, I love my creativity kind of changing over the year. I give myself little um, tasks to do that last a few months and then I know at the end of that period of time I can then move on to another task. And those creative focuses can change to learning all about running a website. They can change to taking the photographs and all that kind of thing that will then be important once you have your stock and you want to sell it. And you can start investigating craft fairs, set your year out so that you have these little chunks of time where you're knitting for three or six months and then you focus on other things. And you can still knit um, in the evenings, but your main job over that period of time will not be knitting, it will be doing other creative things. The other benefit to knitting your stock beforehand is that you may be someone who may find it difficult to knit when you have the orders come in. For example, you may have a busy nine to five job and you know at some points of the year, maybe at Christmas, maybe in the autumn, maybe during the summer, you have a higher workload. So if you want to knit in the spring and the early summer, then that's a perfect time for you to set up your stock. And then in the winter, you'll only have the weekends available or one day at the weekend when you want to sell what you've knitted. So that's a real bonus. You may have children and there are certain times of the year when they need your attention more. So again, that is the perfect time to say, right, I'm knitting at one time of the year and I'll focus on other things at different times of the year. You also may feel that you have health priorities and you know, again, that knitting your stock up beforehand will just take that burden off of you. You think, oh my goodness, well, if I have an order, I don't know whether I'm gonna be well enough to knit it. So. Doing it that way um, is not going to work for you. Knitting the stock up first is going to work for you. That's what worked for me, and that was because of my health when I decided on how I was going to knit when I was selling. I knew I did not want to put the pressure on myself 
maybe I might get a bit more anxious and my health would even deteriorate more. If someone said to me, well, I want three of these hats and two mitts and I want them in two months time. And then I kind of think, oh, can I actually knit them in that time? Yeah, I probably could if I knew I was going to be absolutely really well. But if something goes wrong with my health and it all goes wrong, they won't have them for the birthdays or the Christmas presents that they want them for. So taking the deposit and promising to knit something just wouldn't work for me. I knew that having the stock ready to sell was going to work a lot better. Just think if there's anything in your life that might restrict the way that you knit up orders once they've come in and maybe knitting your stock up first would work for you better. The other thing is, Perhaps you want to knit small items and you know, no matter what time of the year it is, you can knit up stock. They might be Christmas decorations, they may be small socks or knits for babies or children. And these tiny items, perhaps coasters or little baskets for the bathroom. So you know that you can knit an item within half an hour. So you will knit them constantly in your lunchtime. People around the office will know that's who you are. Then you'll knit another item on your way home on the train. And in the evening, you'll knit one or two items as well. So all the way through the year, you can keep replenishing your stock and people will keep buying from you because they know that you're reliable, it's there and it's ready and waiting. So if you're that kind of knitter, you're just happy to fit your knitting in between other parts of the day, then perhaps that is perfect for you too. You just keep replenishing the stock and people keep buying from you. That is a perfect opportunity for you to say, I'm knitting my stock first and I don't have to worry about what other people want from me. I will knit what I want to when I have the time to do it. There's one more thing that I want to suggest and this is perhaps you're someone who sells other items alongside your knitting items. You may buy in bulk things such as eco cleaning products or makeup and you're knitting knitted accessories to go alongside them, maybe makeup scrubbies or dishcloths, and you know that their people will buy them in bulk, people will buy uh, maybe three or four dishcloths at a time, so you need to have them there packaged alongside the cleaning materials. For them to come along and buy all of that stuff and then say, oh, you have to wait for those before I knit them up, isn't gonna really work, because it will appear like in a, in a different kind of business to what you're selling already. So, Work alongside how your other business works and how you sell the products that you have already. So those are the things that I think will be really beneficial. If you want to sell your stock first, just think about those things. Perhaps you feel that you'd like to find out more about the benefits of only knitting once you have the order come in, once you've had the deposit or the full payment come in for your knitted item. And that is what we're going to talk about next week. And indeed, go and have a look at the Profitable Knitting Secrets course over on my website. We sort out your niche, we sort out your prices, we sort out your sales platform, lots of different things in that. And also there are two workshops there now that I've added all about um, the essential pricing mistakes that some knitters make and the business models workshop. What kind of business model do you want to have when you're selling what you knit? And of course, go and have a look at the full Knitting for Profit playlist here on YouTube. Cool, I will see you again next week. And yes, we are going to talk more about Knitting for Profit. I'm going to talk more about should you knit before you sell or should you wait until you have orders. I'll see you for that. Bye for now. Happy knitting. <laughs>